How many do you have? 23, check. 23, guess that's All right. right. We We're getting right. filled up. Move in. You're next here. Right. Step right Go. inside. There's some Mr. room. Collins. There. Everything under control? Seems to be. Right. Come along here. Hurry now. Okay, so far. Find a place inside to settle down and I'll be right in. How many do you have so far? With your family, 26, plus the three of us. Well, keep moving them in. I'll see how it's going. One more thing, yes. sir. I'm not sure, but I don't think all the staff members are here. All right. This is the shelter manager. His first job is to get the respect and confidence of the shelter occupants. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? My name is Bill Collins. I'm your shelter manager. I just want you to know that there is a manager, there is a plan, and there is a trained staff to administer it. Now, our entire staff hasn't arrived yet, but I'll introduce them to you when they do. In the meantime, please fill out these registration forms that are being passed around. And if you have any questions, you can ask one of the staff at a later time. Thank you very much. Bill. Yes. Well, this is it. It sure is. Did your family get in? Yes. Fine. How does the uh, health and sanitation team check out? Well, we're setting up sanitation facilities. The medical supplies are all intact. I'll be with you in a minute. And we have a medical unit set up, so we're ready to take care of anybody who might become sick. Now, I haven't seen Bill Cummings around here yet. Uh, would you check out the water supply for him? Right. Fine. Now, what is it? Oh, sorry to bother you, sir. I just wanted to let you know I've reached control, sir. Good. And the radio checks out. Well, now we'll see how well we've done our homework. Yes, sir. Fast. Yes, I know. I hope the rest of the staff gets here. So do I, but we'll stick to the regular plan. Okay. And Charlie, try to keep them all busy. Yes. Mr. Collins wants us to stick to the regular plan. Oh, Mr. Collins? Yes. There's no radiation ready here. They've been planning a long time, and all that time trying to foresee just what it would be like. This group is fortunate. They have planned well, and they have this their shelter operations plan, the organization in black and white. The manager and his staff have recruited and trained their personnel and have anticipated every shelter function. Mr. McCauley? Yes. Please? What's your count so far? Uh, we have 57. 57, that's top. Our whole staff isn't here yet. <laughs> well, we're full. Oh, George. Well, gentlemen, I guess that indicates that good pre-attack organization uh, doesn't guarantee that you'll have a full staff when the chips are down, does it? No, sir, but the uh, crowd seems to settle down. Water, power, ventilation are okay. And we are checking the food. A good beginning. And some of the staff are here. Two deputies, two of the six team leaders, plus a RADEF man, and four team members. It's a nucleus to build on. It's up to Manager Collins now. Now, who didn't make it? Supply and maintenance, information and training, safety, feeding. Well, we'll have to find replacements for them. Oh, and speaking of feeding, uh, Jim, would you see that the coffee's passed around as soon as possible? Of course. Now, Take it easy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure it's only with a minor roof here you from the hospital circuit. But 
Ladies and gentlemen, please. Settle down, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Let's settle down. We'll have lights in a minute. Just sit tight, and we'll locate the trouble. You know the old saying, if you hear the thunder, you haven't been hit. Well, we're in the dark, but we're still here. Now, while we're waiting for the lights, I'm going to tell you how you and I are going to survive during our shelter stay. We're going to do it because we are organized to do it. We have an operations plan that I feel is... An organized plan may seem too rigid to cope with the unexpected, but it's up to the manager and the staff to apply it with flexibility, to roll with the unexpected, as when the lights go out. I'm assure you that they are ready for immediate use. Now, shelter living is different. We can't have all of our comforts here, but I'm sure that we all brought along our willingness to respect others, our wish for safety, and our desire for order. Now, to this end, we have a trained staff to help make your stay in this shelter livable for us all. Now, one of our very first jobs is to find among you qualified people to round out our organization. So please let us know on your registration forms about your skills and occupation, just exactly what it is you do, because we need your help. Later on, we'll have discussions about how to live in a shelter. Thank you very much. Well, that certainly was clear. Well, I just want to help with the yes. uh, Just one other thing, folks. We are in touch with the control center downtown, and so far, there is no word of fallout in the city. I'll keep you informed. Thanks again. Staffing shelter life with a skeleton staff is another of those unexpected things. But again, if you have a plan, you're ready for it. It's prepared pre-attack and serves as a guide for management. Among other things, it provides general information on the organization of the shelter and of the staff. It should include the Office of Civil Defense Guide for Community Fallout Shelter Management, an ever-ready refresher on management practice. Here should be filed a letter from town officials. It should be posted prominently in the shelter to provide visible evidence of the manager's authority as legally vested in him. The map shows locations of control centers and other public shelters. They are also ready in case any of their staff members don't make it. They have checklists of the things to be done by the shelter manager and by each staff member. The organization chart gives the names of the staff members and the succession of authority. A brief description of the duties of the shelter staff should also be included in the shelter operations plan. Staff quality, training and planning will determine the success of the survival effort. The size of the staff is determined by the shelter its size, arrangement, and its special problems. In this shelter, some people could double up their duties, but there is a team for every function to keep as many people busy as possible. But regardless of its size, every shelter is directed by a manager. He administers the shelter operations plan or program and coordinates the activities of his staff and shelter occupants. He is the leader in a democratic system. Under the manager are the functional teams that carry out management decisions. One is the health and sanitation team. This team provides medical aid and maintains the health and sanitation of the shelter. A safety team prevents and fights fires, maintains order, and provides for escape in emergencies. Supply and maintenance provides supplies for shelter living and proper engineering maintenance. The feeding team has responsibility for the care and handling of food and setting up facilities for preparing and serving the food. The bunking team provides a sleeping plan, decides on bunking arrangements, and has charge of cots and blankets where available. 
the communications team sends and receives various types of messages and keeps the communications log. Information and training keeps shelter occupants informed of happenings inside and outside the shelter and keeps them engaged in training and special activities and appeals to the intellect and spirit to maintain morale. And finally, a special group of trained people maintains a radiological watch, monitoring the shelter space and its environs to assure continued information on radiation levels. These functions are the same in any shelter. Only the organization may vary with the size of the shelter. Leaders of the teams report to deputies of the manager and between them work out routine day-by-day -day problems, leaving the manager free for matters of major policy. Of course, shelters will have a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Here's the organization of a shelter with many rooms. Teams operate in each room and report to their room deputies. They in turn report to the shelter deputies, who report to the manager. Other shelters will have one or more large rooms for, say, a thousand shelter occupants each. Managing this number of shelter occupants would take still another organization and staff. The smallest group in a shelter is the unit, consisting of ten persons. These units are organized into sections of ten units, or one hundred persons. The largest group in the shelter is the division consisting of three to five sections, or 300 to 500 persons. From these examples, you can see that the community must organize and staff shelters to suit their needs, configuration, size, and population. However, even with this pre-attack preparation, all of your regular staff may not be present. Selecting from those actually in the shelter becomes necessary. Well, it looks like an interesting group, huh, John? Yes, sir. There's plenty of talent here, Mr. Collins. And varied, too. Hotel man, cook, policeman, a minister, a gym instructor, and a folk singer. Well, that's fine. This will help. Oh, I should think that out of this group, we'd be able to find uh, people to fill the vacancies rather readily. Well, we're pretty well squared away. Uh, wouldn't you like to complete the staff? All right, let's get at it. Somebody I want you to meet first. Hmm? Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard, I want you to meet Mr. Collins. Mr. Bernard fixed the lights. Well, we owe you a lot, Mr. Bernard. Well, I'm an electrician. You see, Mr. Collins, I noticed how the lights went out. I knew it wasn't a power failure because in a power failure, the lights get dim and then go out. So I looked up your deputy here. A bad the, uh, fuse. Well, we're lucky to have you, Mr. Bernard. Now, we need someone to head up our supply and maintenance team. And I can see by your registration form that you certainly qualify. Right. Would you do it? Okay. Very good. Now, Mr. Fellows here will show you our floor plan and equipment. And I think you'll find that our maintenance is fairly well organized, but we need experience and help. Thanks for getting us out of the dark. Come with me, Mr. Bernard. So Manager Collins begins to select staff members from shelter occupants and fill the positions of those who did not arrive. Mr. Collins, I'd like you to meet a good prospect for taking over feeding. Oh, fine. Excuse me, this is Mrs. Dyer. She runs the cafeteria over on Fulmer Street. Well, I'm happy to know you, Mrs. Dyer. I guess by now you understand that we have a feeding problem here. Oh, this isn't very many people. We're used to cooking for 350 every day just for lunch. Well, that's the kind of experience we need. We have a community shelter food plan. Uh, some food has been brought in already, but we don't yes. know how much yet. I've looked, but it isn't very much. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Dyer. We have federal stocks of food stored here. Now... This will provide a balanced diet more than adequate for our survival. Why, that's a wonderful idea. It will give us a great deal of variety, and I can think of several ways to use it. Well, that's what we need, Mrs. Dyer, imagination. Uh, will you take charge of the feeding? I'd be glad to. Now, you'll have to decide on portion sizes. I'd try to plan for two weeks, if possible. And you can check with Mr. Stevens here. He'll tell you how our feeding plan is organized. 
I'm sure you'll have some good suggestions. All right, Mr. Collins, don't worry about it. Thank you, Mrs. Dyer. Whether it's feeding, supply and maintenance, or any other shelter function, there are plenty of willing non-professionals. But look for the experts first. They have the added experience of working under pressure, as well as the required skills. Then, after they are chosen, the shelter operations plan, description of duties, and an inventory of the available supplies can be used to help orient them. Speedy staff selection will add to the confidence in management.